Dad. Okay, thank you, and um, welcome to Falcon Blues TV. It's me, Dave, as usual, and uh, you know, it's always good when we got special guests on, and you know, this special guest needs no introduction. Uh, Everton legend Kevin Campbell. Kev, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon, mate. Really appreciate you taking time to have a chat with us. Oh, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Nice to be back on. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, how's things? How you do? Have you been keeping lately? It's still busy. Still busy. Yeah. Busy. Busy. Be yeah, but um. Happy, had a good weekend, <laughs> some yeah, good definitely. results at the weekend, That's so um, yeah, looking looking forward to the season. Well, everything went your way really for all results, didn't it? So good good, good start for everyone. Well, listen, everything, ne ne nearly everything, it would have been perfect if my, my son's team would have won, but they drew away. So, hey, listen, we take that. Two wins take and that. a draw, we'll take that. Good stuff. So, Everton, it's been a very interesting couple of weeks. Um, New signings, you know, positivity seems to be back at Goodison at the moment. What's your thoughts on it? Uh, I want to go before the signings because the Blues, the fans were a bit frustrated because Definitely. there was a lot of talk, wasn't there? And everybody knew Carlo Ancelotti had some aces up his sleeve. Mm -hmm. But it was a matter of, you know, rumours about Alan, rumours about James Rodriguez, rumours about the Corey, da di da di da di da and then the dominoes start to fall, don't they? Alan is spotted in in, uh, in Merseyside. Yeah. He's on his way, you know, and that gets done, which is a great signing. Really good player. Tenacious, tough. Brazilian can play. The kid could play. Then Hamas Rodriguez gets announced, which is like, I'm um, incredible. You know, he's a, how many times does British team sign the next golden boot winner of a World Cup? It's, it doesn't really happen. Doesn't happen. No. Uh, you know, it doesn't really happen. And then the one I really wanted was Decore. Yeah. Um, I think that is a really big signing. I think the other two are great signings, but Decore is a, such an underrated player. He's big, strong, physical. He's very smart. He's got a good technique. And, you know, Everton swapped a clapped out Cortina engine. <laughs> for a Rolls Royce engine, and Amazing. you saw that you saw that in the game. Yes, yeah. uh, it's, it's it's they've taken it to a new level already. Yeah, most certainly. I was just going to say that you know, from even looking at social media and things like that, the spirit in the team seems to have increased quite considerably as well. And as as a player, Kev, how important is that for a team to be successful, to have that kind of spirit and to have that kind of camaraderie, almost, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I tell you what's really important when you when you get players of that quality in your in your squad in your team, everyone else has to step up. Yeah, and and that's what makes other players think. Oh, hold on, we're serious now. Everton mm -hmm. are serious now because Everton have messed around a little bit in the transfer market. I think with Gomez coming in, and 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 Dina, that was the sign of things. Yerimina. You know, you think, OK, OK, you know, good, good players. But this, these lot is, a, is another yeah. step up. So you're saying right now you look around in the dressing room and you're thinking, we've, we've got a chance here. So mm -hmm. that's what makes the level that the camaraderie looks good. Carlo Ancelotti is that type of manager anyway. He doesn't really, you never really see him be falling out with people or anything like that. So I, I only could see good coming to Everton now. Yeah, speaking of Ancelotti, he seems to have taken to the city really well. A bit, a bit like yourself when you when yeah. when you come to Merseyside. Yeah, do you know? I, I think Carlo Ancelotti's got his. It, it, obviously, he's Italian, but he's got that he's got that um, calm nature about him, and it's easy for him to connect with the with the Evertonians. Yeah. If you if you understand, you know the Evertonians will gravitate to him, but he will gravitate to the to the Evertonians and the way of life and the culture, etc. Because it's about the people. You know, he's yeah. a people person. I was a people person, and that's why I'm I'm still deep entrenched in the Everton side as it Absolutely. is right now. Yeah, big time because the the people are so brilliant. Yeah, and speaking of like the follow like the followers in just in Liverpool with Hammers coming into the into the team, it almost seems like we've got an army of followers now from Colombia and South America. You know, Everton should be taking full of that advantage of that, and, and you know, branching out more and you know encouraging encouraging it. 
You've got to. You've got to. You've got to leverage his stardom. I mean, he's a, you, you, you're talking about a top player from Real Madrid <laughs> leaving Real Madrid to come to Goodison Park and, yeah. and Everton. It, this is this is this is dreamlike. Yeah, this definitely. is really is. I mean, I'm an ex-player, and this is dreamlike for me. Yeah. So what it must be like for you guys? <laughs> yeah. You know that that quality coming inside the building is in, in, is impressive. He he's got a fan base, obviously that stretches all across America, South America, etc. That's why when Everton signed him, the billboards and stuff, electronic billboards, had Hamas Rodriguez in Miami, New York, etc. Because you know his fans are everywhere. Yeah. So Everton have to leverage that. And I'm, I'm going to ask you this. Are you going to start um, doing subtitles in Spanish for your thing now? Because we, that might be, you know. I, th I think for my scouts, Kev, I might have to do it in English first. Well, well, <laughs> there's going to have to be some some translation, okay. you know. Because, look, if, if, if they're interested in what's going on, everybody's got to play their part. Yeah, definitely. I think you can do it on YouTube, so that, so that so that's good. That that's at least at least that's something that's free. <laughs> I can yeah. deal with that. Yeah. But um, you know, as you're saying about like the fans, what we think of it personally, I I think this has just been a roller coaster of emotions for the last two weeks. You know, to go from where we were to say, you know, Hamas is he's, he's in he's in the um, the Titanic Hotel. Well, he was in London first, wasn't he? He was, he was in yeah. London. And then I think, he was... I think everyone started panicking then as well. Yeah. Like, is he signing it. for a club <laughs> in London, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird that he's in the Titanic. And then there's all the, you know, the super sleuths that are Evertonians with photographs with, with, with Alan and with Carlo and Decore. And you're going, this is actually happening. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it, was, it was trying to, it's like, until it's done and on, signed on the dotted line and he's holding the shirt... We can't believe anything. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's there. You know, we've seen that we've seen this happen time and time again. But you know, it, it for me, this is this is the most excited I've been about Everton in a long time. And you know, we've we've had our ups and downs, and especially more downs than ups, unfortunately. And this one now just seems legit, like a genuine push. Like this is the this is the change. This is the catalyst. Yeah. And I think that showed on uh, on Sunday against Tottenham. Yeah, you know, I was, I thought to myself when I, uh, obviously, I, I thought I tipped Everton to win, but I thought we're gonna we're gonna find out we're gonna find out about Everton now because mm -hmm. remember that at the end of the uh, restart, Everton played Spurs at Spurs. Yeah, and if we're honest, Everton were awful on the day. We we haven't been good for a while, though, Kev. That, that since the restart, we've not we've not done what we needed to do. Yeah, but we're, Everton were awful on the day. Mm -hmm. That's my yeah. point. So it's a gauge. It was a gauge oh, where Spurs were and where Everton were. And well, if if we're honest, if Richarlison have had his shooting boots on and had a little bit more vision, Everton would have walked away with a two or three nil win. Yeah. You know, it's so it was that convincing for me. And the, the 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 play from the team as a whole, and those three um, new players, sensational, absolutely sensational. I'm I'm sh listen. I'm buzzing. I don't know about the blue yeah. boys. All the blue, but I'm buzzing about about what I saw. And uh, you know, long may continue. Well, no, normally after we play Spurs, if I watched it in the pub and it's been an away game, I'm home as soon as the final whistle goes. I didn't leave. I didn't leave this weekend. I've, I've had a good weekend. <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> You enjoyed it, yeah. But um, it just it just seemed to like the the three that come in, uh, Decore, Allen, and Hammers, just seemed to just everyone just seemed to up the game as well defensively, uh, up front. You know, it's it's amazing what the addition of a, a midfield actually does for you in this side, isn't it? Yeah, and and you know, you know, as uh, even last season, you, you you speak about it, don't you? You speak about. It. If we could get better players, what it would do, mm. and you're seeing it for yourself. Yeah. What quality players do? Quality players not only improve what they do in the team, and and that position, that department. Every it, it's making everyone else better as well. Yeah. I mean, Pickford was better. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Jordan Pickford had what? That's one of the best games I've seen him have. Yeah. He was commanding of his box. He came out. He cleared. He punched stuff. He caught stuff. He, he made good a, a good save when he needed to. Really important. The defense was quite quite solid. You know, I thought Everton attacked 
very well. And like we say, with a, with a little bit more luck uh, or a little bit more vision, Everton walk away with a 2 or 3 nil win. So, you know, you could tick that box. The lads played together. They understood what it's about. Got a win. When's the last time Everton went to Spurs and won? Well, the last time we actually won against the top six was 2013 against United. Right. So we're going back before then, you know. Yeah, well, times. exactly. Exactly. So this was long overdue. And and what a victory. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, well go, talking about strikers then, because you mentioned um, Richarlison. What what what's the what's the what's the goal for Calvert Lewin and Richarlison this season? Uh, it, it's I, I think Richarlison reverts back to his more natural position of wide left. Mm-hmm. I think Dominic Calvert Lewin has to replicate what he done last season. If he could get what is it, fifteen goals? Yeah. If he could get fifteen goals this season. Wow. Yeah. That's a great return. Richarlison, if he could get anywhere near what he got last season. Great return. Mm-hmm. Now, and now we're looking at Hammers. Hammers has to get double figures. Yeah. If he doesn't get double figures, he's got to assist double figures. Yeah. So he's got to get... We we want both. We're greedy. We I want do, both. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but if he, if he doesn't get... He, he will score, but if he doesn't get those goals, he needs to assist yeah. more for that creative side. So Definitely. that's what I think. He, he looks capable of doing that, Hammers. You know, you, you saw that. You saw that ball that went into Richardson where you know he, he tried to edit down and it's not work for him. You know, he's he's had that shot of, uh, from outside the box as well. He's capable of doing it. I think he, a bit of fitness, a bit more, and just he, he's got the confidence. Certainly, you know. Listen, you, you could see when when you see a player of his standard level, you could just see the class and the quality that when he when, receiving balls t- in tight areas. And then he's shifting it out of his feet and, and putting perfect passes wide or yeah. to strikers running on. He's, he's a dream. Honestly, he's a dream. What well, makes me want to get my boots on, honestly. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a dream to, to play with. And obviously, he's, he's, he's not fully fit. But what, when he's fully fit, watch yeah, out, Lee. Look, look out, definitely. Um, what do you think of Moise Keane? Then, obviously, he's, he, he's taken a bit, of a, a bit longer to transition into the Premier League. I think you'll see more of them this season. Yeah, what we've got to understand about uh, Moise Keane as well is he's so young. Yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's a kid. He's still a kid. And it's going to take a bit of time. I, I I think the penny will drop for him at some stage this season. Yeah. It will. The The, the problem right now is Dominic Calvert-Lewin is doing such a great job as that mm-hmm. focal point. Yeah. That lone striker that, you know, there's times where Richarlison's going to join him. There's times where Richarlison's going to play a wide left and Hamez is going to play on the right. Yeah. So it's just a matter of what Carlo Ancelotti wants to do. But there will be time for um, Moise Keane, that's for sure. Great stuff. OK, well, we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up on this then, Kev. So what is, what's Everton's goal for this season? What would you like to see from this Everton side? Everton have to, ch- Everton have to challenge for the Cups and they have to try and make a challenge for that top six. They have to. Yeah. That has to be, that's the minimum. You know, getting in that top six into Europe is one thing, but having a good cut run and a challenge for a trophy, don't mind even if it's the League Cup, but having a goal, you know, getting yeah. some silverware on that side, getting that winning feeling back at Goodison, I think that's really important now. Yeah. Do you, th- um, do you think now, looking, looking at all the false stones we've had, uh, Ronald Coombe and Marco Silva, uh, David Moyes to a lesser extent, do you think... Now, this is the actual time that Everton are finally capable of doing it. Well, the, 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 the question always with the previous guys is, was the squad good enough? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the fans could question, were the managers good enough? Yeah. You could never question Carlo Ancelotti. Carlo Ancelotti's resume is better than most managers. Yeah. So it's not the manager. Now it's the players. And now... They're making the additions to the squad that is needed to get them over the line. Yeah. So, listen, it, it can only improve from here. It's not going to get any worse. I don't, I don't think because you've got the key players in the key position in the centre of the pitch. Do you see anyone else coming in? I any, hope so. Any additions? Touchwood, I hope so. I, I hope it's not finished yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I was on Sky earlier on today and they were talking about uh, Wilfred Zaha. Yeah. And... 
I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'd love to see him at Goodison Park. Mm. Because, because of the way the team is set up now, the wide players get one-on-one -on -one a lot. Yeah. And he is, I think he's in the top two of players to beat, to, to win one-on-one -on -one, uh, matchups. So if you get somebody on the outside who could beat a man one-on-one, -on -one, you're in business. Yeah. You, you are yeah. in business because you're, you're dragging a center half out of position. So, and if the center half don't come, then he's cutting into the box and then, then you're in yeah. big trouble. So, what he's going to cost, I don't know whether you can, whether Everton could make it work with a payment system, but somebody like him would make it, make Everton a serious, serious proposition. Lovely stuff. Uh, Kev, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Um, make sure you're uh, subscribing to Falcon Blues TV and following one Kevin Campbell on Twitter. You know, you're always about Kev. You're always there to have a chat with Everton. Always, always. Story. Love the Blues. Great stuff. All right. Thanks for watching and up to top face and I'll catch you in a bit.